If your 808 is feeling flat, not hitting hard enough or not cutting through the mix, then this is the perfect video for you because I'm about to show you exactly how to fix these problems. By the end of this video, your 808 will be hitting violently like a girl you just cheated on. Mark my words. But before we make a deal with the devil to become the Wizard King, I've got a question for you. That question is, how can you use your kick to make your 808 cut through the mix even more? Leave your answer down below. If you don't know, don't worry because I'll be revealing the answer later on in this video. Just stay tuned. Now let's get into it. This is a beat I made a little bit earlier. Let's play it back a little bit. When does the 808 come in? Like second half of the verse. So we're not gonna go too far back. We're just gonna start a little bit before the verse and allow it to build up into the 808 so it can give you that proper impact. But you'll hear exactly how the 808 is sounding, how it's cutting through the mix, and then we'll go through the steps that I took to get there and you can follow those exact steps yourself. Let's do it. And then let's also play a bit of the chorus. You can hear how the 808 is sounding there with more instruments and the kick in as well. Let's go. That's enough. You can hear a little bit of distortion or clipping. Usually I try to keep that to a minimum, but in this particular beat, I was like, you know what? That clipping, that distortion is fine. I'm not worried about that. And sometimes clipping and distortion can help you out and sound good. Sometimes it sounds terrible. Sometimes you want to make sure that doesn't happen. But let's get into the steps on how to actually do this. So the first thing you need to do is actually to do with your melodies. If you don't do this with your melodies, your 808 is just never going to sound good, okay? What you need to do is go to your melodies, get a big helping dose of EQ and cut out the low end. As you can see, all my melodies have a low cut, I think it's a high pass, yeah, high pass filter, high pass cut to about 150. I think this is 139, 140. So that's on the main melody. And then if we go to like the up, we've got a cut to about 160. Everything has a cut in it. Every single thing has a high pass filter. This has less of one, but everything is cutting out that low end, especially the low end vibes that you're not going to be using for that particular instrument. Because what will happen a lot of times is you'll have an instrument, it may have no audio in that low end, but if you don't cut it out with EQ, there'll still be some frequencies getting through that aren't actually audible, but will mess up your actual 808. So make sure you're cutting everything out. And especially if you're using a instrument or a melody or a loop or whatever that does have low end frequencies in there, like my main chorus melody had a bunch of low end frequencies in there and a bunch of other instruments that I used would have had those in there as well. You want to cut those out as much as possible so that your bass, your 808, your kick can actually shine through. First step, get rid of the low end in everything else in your mix because that is where the 808 lives. That's where your kick lives. Make sure there's space for it, okay? Next step is about what goes on in the piano roll. There's the piano roll for my 808 pan. As you can see, nearly all of the velocities of my 808s are at the top. This is how you want it. The only reason I have velocities that aren't at the top is because it creates dynamics when I'm doing notes that are an octave higher. For example, if I can play this back. That, doo -doo, that sounds better when I bring the velocity down a little bit. But if you're not doing that, in general, all your notes should be at the max velocity, yeah? This will help it sound louder and cut through the mix a whole lot more. If you're not doing this already, even just doing this is gonna make a big difference. If your velocities are down here, it's gonna make a big difference 
in how it sounds versus having your velocities at the top. Let's show you a little example. This is what these 808 hits sound like with my vel velocities down low. I don't even know if you could tell the difference there. <laughs> but trust me, there is a difference, yeah? Let's go on to the next step. It would probably been easier to hear if I sold it out and turned off the effects, but unnecessary. You know what's going on here. Let's keep it moving. That should be self-explanatory. I shouldn't have to go any deeper into that. The next thing is actually mixing the 808. Now, when I mix my 808, I start by doing a low pass filter to get rid of all the high end that the 808 is not using. So just like I go in all my other instruments and get rid of the low end, I get rid of the high end in the 808 because it's just not using these frequencies. And that just cleans up your mix. So definitely do that first. But to actually make it cut through the mix, we've got Sound Goodizer and it's on the A pattern. I've just got a little bit of it there. I don't have too much Sound Goodizer. Let's turn off this and let's see how it sounds without anything and then we'll start adding the effects, okay? So this is what it sounds like. If we go to here, which is just gonna be the 808, with no effects, this is what the area sounds like. Sounds like a background character. Then let's add the EQ. Can't really notice much of a difference. Then we add Sound Goodizer. There will be a bit of a difference now. This is what it sounds like. And just quick comparison. Big, big difference. Then lastly, in my effect panel, we've got R Bass. Now R Bass is the best plugin you can use for your 808. Get it right now. I'll leave a link down below in the description. Get R Bass, 100%, it is amazing, get it, okay? This is a plugin that I would recommend to every single producer, doesn't matter what genre you're in, if you're using bass, get R Bass, because it just makes your bass hit like nobody's business. Let me show you the difference between having our bass on and having our bass off. Now I did nothing to this, didn't finagle the effects or the meters whatsoever. I just flung our bass on and I was like, oh, that sounds good enough. Let's keep it moving. And this is what it sounds like without our bass. And then I'll click it on so you can hear the big difference. Okay. So this is without our bass with the sound goodizer and EQ. Sounds fair, right? This is with our bass. It's like, what? More bass? Like, where did all that bass come from? Did the bass come from over there? Did the bass bring more bass friends? Loads of bass, okay? So let's play it again and then I'll click it in and click it off. Big difference, trust me, our bass. Even if I turn off Sound Goodizer, it would make a really big difference, but I like the combination of Sound Goodizer and R Bass, like it really works out. Another thing you can do is add distortion. Now the distortion I'd usually add would be Decapitator. But the thing is, if you're using R Bass, you don't wanna add distortion as well, because I feel like R Bass adds a little bit of distortion. So I'd use something like Dark Fat, and I, let's turn off the R Bass. This is what it sounds like without the distortion. And then if we add some distortion, Like it adds a lot. And this is our bass. So different effects, different kind of tone, different sound, same result, it's cutting through the mix. If we add both of them, it's just gonna be too much. Too much, too much, you're going too far now. So either pick our bass or pick some distortion and what these do is they, as far as I know, I'm not 100% sure what our bass does, but I know distortion adds more harmonic elements in at different frequencies. So if all your harmonics are down here, you 
add some distortion, it will basically just add more harmonics throughout the frequency spectrum, which will make your bass more audible. So if you're using like, you've got a bass pattern and you're listening to it and certain times the notes are getting too low and you can't hear them, distortion will really help in bringing that out as well as our bass as well, which is why I do think it has some distortion in there because it does sound like it's distorting the signal a bit. So that's why I really, really like our bass. Link down below, definitely get it. Now, if you want your beats to be half mixed before you even get to the mixing stage, you can grab one of my beat mixing templates. This is my pop trap loop mixing template, which is amazing. This is the one that I'm using all the time now. Link down below, go to jcarterray.com forward slash FL templates. That's gonna help your beat sound more professional, help your 808s kick through without even doing much because everything's already there for you. All you need to do is add one of these two plugins, the R-Bass or the Decapitator, and everything's gonna be beautiful. All your melodies and instruments will have that high pass filter that I already talked about with the low end cut out. So it just mixes everything. So your 808 will be hitting through the mix before you even start mixing. Very, very important. Link down below, grab that. Earlier on, I asked you a question and I'm a man on my word. So let's give you an answer to that question right now. That question was, how can you use your kick to make your 808 cut through the mix even more? The answer is to side chain your kick to your melody and then use an EQ dip sidechain from your kick to your 808. Let me explain. Right now, when my kick hits, my 808 dips in frequency around where my kick is most prominent, so it allows my kick to cut through the mix. Let me quickly show you what happens there. So this is the kick, you see? So when the kick is hitting, this is dipping, and the kick is coming through, shining through, and giving us more of that cut through the mix, yeah? Then my kick is side changed to my melody bus, which has all my melodies in it. And then when my kick hits, my melody dips in volume to make the kick come through. And a byproduct of that is the 808 comes through as well. So let's see that in action. And we can make this more prominent by lowering our threshold. And then you can make it so that your kick hits every time your 808 hits if you need that extra boost. However, I like to have them on their own rhythms to kind of make the beat more bouncy and to make it more interesting. So that's how you can use your kick to make your 808 cut through the beat even more, cut through the mix even more. And a free gift before you go, you can get access to my easy nine step trap beat making formula by joining my free course. Link is in the description down below. That course will take you from starting your beat, making a melody all the way to mastering your beat. I highly suggest you check that out and the rest of the great stuff in the description, like the beat mixing template and our bass. Trust me, all those things are gonna help you make much better beats today. Link down below. If you've got any questions or any other videos you want me to make, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.